So I'm gonna have to go home. What's up everyone? So I posted a poll on whether or not you would like me to demonstrate the new Hobie Pro Angler 360. I have a few friends that approached me to include Ben, who's a legit tiny boater who owns the Illumicraft. Mike, you wanna help us do a video? And obviously, I had to ask my audience. So to my surprise, it pulled at 70%. Only 10% didn't want to see this video. And I don't want to be like Congress. I don't want to not follow up on ideas that pull at 70 plus percent. So I'm going to drop this video right now. compare the whole of a 2020 and a 2019 Pro Angler, they're very, very similar, uh, minus the cavity here that the drive actually drops into. Clip in that, you pull that forward and it comes out. The two alignment pins are now up into the forward side of the drive where they used to be right in the middle here with the click and goes. Slide down into these grooves and then the back locks in. Um, in the side here, what's giving your 360 motion is this gear around the core of the drive and in the, in the side of the drive well, there's another small gear that's connected to a belt. It travels up through to the handle mechanism. The top handle is what's going to be spinning the fins in a circle and this forward handle here is your normal rudder control. So not only can you control which way the thrust is going with the drive itself, but you can steer the boat at the same time. So you can have um, basically the ability to spin in a circle without moving anywhere. You just rotate right in a circle. And then to put the drive back in, you just align the two. Plastic clip snaps it in place in the back. So That is pretty sweet. That is serious, that's years of refinement. Mirage Drive pedals, they adjust in a little bit different way as well since they used to in the past. You pull this little trigger, lift up, and then you can slide the pedal either further away or closer to the chair depending on your leg weight. Wow. But this red arrow here is going to resemble what you'd see on the top of a trolling motor. Resistance to it, yes. so that the drive's not spinning underneath the boat when you're just kicking along. Yeah, and I can appreciate that because nobody really likes a trolling motor that just flops around. The rudder tension on the side of the boat is one of those things that's pretty neat, especially if you're dealing with river and the current. And loosening it, you just pop it out, click it back in to tighten it back down. Oh, so when you popped it out, it, it just slowly released tension. Oh yeah, just put it right out there. Sweet. The kickstand is for behind the chair. So that kickstand there, if you want the chair to go to its lower position, pull, pulls that kickstand back oh. so it goes out of the way. And then you've got these barrels on the side of the chair where you rotate these barrels to adjust the angle of the seat. So this would be like the highest position that you'd be in. Yeah. One of the cool things about the Pro Angler is that the pedals uh, are lower than the seat of the chair in some aspects. How do you unlock it? You push it forward, push, forward. push the drum forward, and turn it the opposite direction. Pro Angler in general has been the fishing boat for Hobie, like as far as their flagship goes. The boat has a nice carry handle on it. Uh, these are great for sliding the boats around. They're bolted into the hull and they're really sturdy. The front hatch is a dry area for different things. A lot of people put extra stuff in there uh, that they don't really need to access while they're on the water that they want to have with them. The side plates on the, the side of the boat here, mm -hmm. both sides has one. The slots are for fillet knives. These holes are for scissors and tools. Spin off of the GT90 track. This is Hobie's deal now. They're just molding it into their boats to make it a little easier. Hobie also has their H-rail, and a lot of people use this H-rail for mounting their rod holders and fish finders. The clamps are a little bit different. You can see that on this cup holder. That's really in there too. There's no flex in that. No, these are great. You can that's move the boat around with them. Pretty serious. Let's talk yeah. about these rod racks. I know that's a big issue, rod storage. 
on a kayak is is a big thing, and I know the Hobie has gone through pretty great depths in their in their previous generation kayaks. So in the, in how, the, how long of a rod will this stow? Uh, so those six rods, which is actually pretty good for a boat this small, like yeah. So comfortably, what, what are we looking about at? About eight foot. You can store an eight foot rod in this. Yeah. Can you move it? I don't have an eight foot rod with me. We've got like a seven six over there that that's, we could grab. Let's but, stick it in there. Yeah. Let's do so, it. Okay. Well, to pull this bin out so you can see the inside as well. These are the tubes that are going to be encased in there. And there's plenty of room where you can run extra stuff, like if you wanted to run fish tape and run wires for nav lights or anything, you can do that. There's a, a mount specifically for this mast post. Uh huh. And a 12 volt, 10 amp hour battery is what most people run for lights and fish finders in these guys. But we have a mount that attaches to this and will keep the battery from sliding around. But then when sweet. you when you run your wires through the boat, like if you're putting your fish finder over here, uh -huh. uh, these three ways, your, your wires are gonna come through here. When you purchase the Hobie, it's gonna give you a handful of different little rubber, I don't know if you can see that through the back. Yeah. But can. these are different little rubber grommets that are for different size wires. Those are going to replace the blank plugs. That's pretty sweet. Here. So they really thought ahead in terms of modifications that people generally like to do, and they gave you the stuff to do it along with that. Sure, yeah. Running a, a fish finder is going to be real easy. I would say the coolest part about this boat and the fish finder aspect is the Guardian transducer well. And that, the Guardian underneath here gives you the ability to run a side imaging transducer um, up to about 12 inches. So it'll suck the transducer up into the belly of the boat when you're not using it and drop it down so you get side really? imaging. You've got these two colors here available, the blue and the green camo. Um, it's available in 12 and 14 foot versions. This one is a 7.6. And so the butt of the rod, is up here and you have the ability to uh, can you see that down through here the butt of the rod on this seven six right here ends here you still have another about foot and then if you put it on the top rung you can go back even further and we've had to do that oh, with yeah. nine foot fly rods and things like that but you're good up to about an eight foot rod and then you use these tubes for, I'm on the way to the lake, pack all your rods in there nice and tight. We have covers for them as well that you can get for that road trip where you're not gonna lose anything out of your boat. Um, some ready tackle, stuff that you need all the time. Maybe your hooks and sinkers, terminal stuff, would be great to keep right here underneath the seat so you can have that access real quick. You can play no boxes as well. Underneath the chair, there's these two foam padded areas. And those are really inset for larger Plano boxes. So you could have a couple plastic boxes there, or a crank in a plastic box. And realistically, those four boxes could be everything you use for that day. And that keeps your boat very simple. A yeah. few rods, all your tackle is safe and secure, and you're ready to go. I think a lot of people can appreciate simplicity on the water. Definitely, especially with kayaking, a lot of minimalists Absolutely. out there, they're gonna have like one spinning rod and two casting rods, and that'll be everything that they use that day. Yep. Floats in almost no feet of water. Look at that. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to go home. Shit. That's fail. <laughs> well, so you okay. got anything in your pockets? No, yeah, it's fine. Pushing yourself sideways. That's pretty insane. So I mean you have you have the generation of Hobie Pro Angler right before this one, correct? Yes. And so how do you compare the 360 to that one? Because I know that one 360 is uh, super uh, way different than the 180. This is a this is like a trip for me. 
I mean, is it somewhat better? A lot better? It's a lot better. A lot better. So as good as the the, the the 180 that you have right now, as good as that thing is, this thing is a lot better than that. Oh, way better. Way better. Um, super intense. <laughs> like, especially if you get up in the toolies or something and you need to, like, go next to the two rock piles. I got a, a smallie right there. I'm going to... I got to talk to the him, bring him back, that fish comes around the back of the boat, I can direct that fish the other way. Sweet. So there you go, the Hobie Pro Angler 360, with an insane Mirage Drive that swims the boat sideways. Insane. Yes, I did try this boat out, but uh, I'll save my analysis and the footage for another day. Until then, I hope you liked this review. Tight lines, guys. Peace.